Welcome one and all in here, out there, all around the world to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert, and I just want to start off tonight with an early blooming bouquet of happy Fridays to one and all. It is good to have you here because I know everyone in my audience and everyone on my staff are fully vaxxed to the max. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, that's not the case everywhere. Last week, the Supreme Court struck down Biden's vaccine mandate for large businesses. And shortly thereafter, Starbucks announced it is no longer requiring employees to get vaccinated or submit to weekly testing, which is huge because they have over 9,000 U.S. coffee shops, and that's just in a two-block radius around the Ed Sullivan Theater. <laughs> this, drink our coffee. This policy has a big impact on the American workforce because Starbucks employs 200,000 workers and it seems like none of them are working on your order even though you're pretty sure that lady who just got the cake pops came in after you. (laughs) Sous vide egg bites. Where's my sous vide egg bites? In a memo, uh, Starbucks COO tried to have it both ways, explaining, while the vaccine rule is now paused, I want to emphasize that we continue to believe strongly in the spirit and intent of the mandate, because nothing says you believe in a rule like no longer having it. (laughs) It's like telling your landlord, listen, I want you to know that I believe in this building's no pet policy, even though I've adopted a Bengal tiger. (laughs) She smells you, run! (laughs) The COO also, down, down, down. CEO also emphasized that more than 90% of Starbucks workers in the United States had disclosed their vaccination status. But notably, he wouldn't say what percent of those workers are not fully vaccinated. Yeah, not particularly comforting. Hey, before we make love, I want you to know that I took an STD test and I know for certain whether or not I have one. (laughs) Now let me just dim the lights before you get a good look at what we're dealing with here. You like Jackson Pollock? You a big fan of Jackson Pollock, are you? (laughs) We here at the Columbia Broadcasting Syndicate want you to know that The Late Show is not only safe, it's 100% free five days a week. How do we do it? Fuck you! Now, unfortunately, not every entertainment platform is quite so generous to its people. This week, it was announced that Netflix is raising their prices. And if you're concerned about what that means for the Netflix account that you use, don't worry. That's your ex-boyfriend's mom's problem. (laughs) With the... She's very nice. Very nice. Everybody counts me all over the place. With the new prices, the cost for their most expensive premium plan increased $2 to $19.99 a month. For comparison, Hulu costs $12.99. Disney Plus costs $7.99, and Crackle's plan is still, we'll pay you, for God's sake, just tell people we're still here. (laughs) And whatever it costs to get Paramount Plus, it's worth it. Paramount Plus, a mountain of contractually obligated plugs. (laughs) Now, make it so. There's big uh, news in uh, NFTs, and for those of you who are wondering what an NFT is, Look it up and tell me, because I don't get it, even though it's been explained to me many times, one time, by me. (laughs) Well, whatever they are, it was just announced that New York's first NFT restaurant is coming soon. The restaurant, which is called Fly Fish Club, doesn't have a location yet, but the founders have announced that the menu is (laughs) seafood-inspired. So, goldfish crackers? (laughs) Seafood inspired isn't a thing. No one wants to take a bite of something and say, wow, that really reminds me of a shrimp. (laughs) So to recap, we don't know where this restaurant will be or what they will serve. Let's see if one of their founders can explain. Fly Fish Club is gonna be a modern interpretation of everything that you love and appreciate when you walk into a restaurant, but turned upside down on its face and inside out. That's right, upside down, on his face, inside out, backside, front side, lefty tighty, righty loosey. Everything about this restaurant is so backwards, you're gonna eat with your butt and poop out your mouth. Who's hungry? (laughs) It's crazy. It's crazy, it's insane. (laughs) You're gonna need to be medicated. Uh... We're gonna have bowls of Zoloft. (laughs) 
Now, if you want to get your non-existent seat at the made-up table, it's going to set you back because right now, a regular membership goes for about $7,900 in cryptocurrency, and the higher-level Omakase membership goes for roughly $13,000. Or you can go to Red Lobster and be a douchebag for free. <laughs> and I, what's this? Hold on, excuse me, what's this? Yes, I, okay, firstly, I'm being told that I do not have an earpiece, and second, <laughs> it's time for a Late Show comeuppance watch. Now, regular viewers, Regular viewers know that Come Up and Swatch is a segment we've never done before. In it, we outline powerful men who are on the verge of getting their comeuppance. And tonight, we're very close to discovering the identities of some of the friends of billionaire sexual predator and all around horrible former human being, Jeffrey Epstein. Last month, Epstein's former accomplice, Jelaine Ghislaine, Ghislaine? Prisoner number 405. <laughs> was found guilty of five federal charges and is facing 65 years in jail. And even though the names of Epstein's pals were sealed in a previous case, Maxwell's lawyers say she will no longer fight to keep the names of eight John Doe's a secret. Which means... Which means... Soon, a comeuppance could be up and coming. And these John Doe's could be any number of powerful men who have been seen repeatedly with Epstein, former President Bill Clinton, the other former president, the former Alan Dershowitz, former Microsoft CEO Bill Gates, or part-time clarinetist Woody Allen. If it's revealed that one of the John Doe's is Woody Allen, it could ruin his reputation. <laughs> of course, one man we do know spent a lot of time with Jeffrey Epstein is Andrew. You guys know Andrew? Yeah. You might know him as Prince Andrew. But last week, in light of his sexual assault trial, the Queen stripped him of his titles. Now, a new documentary in the United Kingdom is outlining some of Andrew's unusual bedroom habits. No, not those. <laughs> Although, yeah, probably those. I mean, in this case, his teddy bear collection. Former royal staffer Paul Page explains. It had about 50 or 60 stuffed toys positioned on the bed. And basically, there was a... Uh, a card the inspector showed us uh, in a drawer, and it's a picture of these bears all in situ on the bed. And the reason for the laminated picture was that if he, those bears weren't put back in the right order by the maids, he would shout and scream and become verbally abusive. Wow. This new Paddington movie seems a lot darker than the originals. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guest is Elvis Costello. But when we come back, meanwhile...